For years, international football has been dominated by the flashy, entertaining and extremely skillful stars from the South American nation of Brazil. The country has provided the world with a production line of footballing greats, whose legends will long outlast their careers. This time, we shine the spotlight on the amazing rags to riches tale of Rivaldo Vitor Borba Ferreira, known to his friends and fans simply as Rivaldo. Rivaldo was born on the 19th of April 1972 in Paulista, Brazil. Located in the state of Pernambuco, a city made famous for its beaches. However, the future looked far from bright for the young Rivaldo, who was born into extreme poverty. Rivaldo grew up in the favelas of the town. The poverty experienced by Rivaldo caused him to be malnourished as a child and also to lose a number of his teeth. Footballing fame seemed a world away. His circumstances presented a major obstacle that would need to be overcome if he was to reach his potential as a footballer. He simply didn't have the physical health and strength to survive in a professional sport. But when a person possesses as much natural talent as Rivaldo, there is always help. However, all hope was nearly lost in 1989, when his father Romildo was killed in a road accident. Despite his sorrow, the 16-year-old Rivaldo signed with local club Paulista later that year. The Paulista coaches took a chance on Rivaldo, even though they believed he was physically too weak to succeed. He remained with the club until 1991, when he moved to Santa Cruz. He lasted a year there before moving south to the state of Sao Paulo in 92, where he played for Mogi Miram in the Brazilian second tier league. It was with Mogi Miram that Rivaldo produced one of the highlights of his young career and made club scouts stand up and take notice. In a 1993 Sao Paulo state championship match against Noroeste, as soon as the referee's whistle was blown to begin the match, Rivaldo noticed that the Noroeste goalkeeper was out of position. He lobbed the ball from the midfield circle over the defenders and the keeper and into the net for a goal. The next season saw Rivaldo in the first division, playing for Corinthians in the state capital. He had a fantastic season, but switched clubs again after a year. This time, he moved to Palmeiras, who went on to win the Brazilian Serie A championship. Rivaldo was transferred to Europe and played for Spanish club Deportivo La Coruna. He spent just one season there before being transferred to FC Barcelona in 1997. He had an immediate impact and earned many individual trophies in his five seasons with the club. Among them, a prestigious FIFA World Player of the Year award in 1999. Rivaldo produced arguably his best football during his time at Barcelona. However, during his third year at the club, he had a falling out with manager Louis van Gaal after Rivaldo insisted on being played as a playmaker rather than on the left wing. He was released from his contract in 2002 and put up for transfer. There are some who thought Rivaldo was having a negative impact on the club. I hope they, Barcelona, will be champions because of Rivaldo's departure. I hope they get titles for Barcelona because they have no excuse. Rivaldo is gone. According to them, Rivaldo was the one causing damage to the system. Well, Rivaldo is no longer in that system. Now they surely will be champions of the European Cup, the League and the King Cup. When Rivaldo's departure was confirmed, he thanked the club and the Barcelona fans for their support. First of all, I want to thank the fans for all they have done for me during five seasons. I'm leaving the same way I entered here, through the front door. I always tried to do my best for Barcelona, and surely the fans have done their best for Rivaldo. That's what happens in soccer. Barcelona has also done many good things for Rivaldo. Thanks again to all. With Barcelona behind him, 
the next step was to find a new club, and there were many interested parties. It was Italian club AC Milan that secured his services. Italian Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi played a major role in luring the midfielder to Milan. I hope to be in top form because I know it's difficult to win the Italian league, but I've always been a winner. There were a lot of clubs interested in buying me, but I think I've made the right decision coming to Milan. It's a great team and a great club. I want to thank him for his confidence in me and bringing me to Milan. I spoke to him several times on the telephone and I'd like to thank him for the contract. Rivaldo came to Milan as one of the top players in the world. He had scored 130 goals during his five seasons at Barcelona. The Brazilian midfielder seduced crowds with his attacking style of play, typifying the so-called samba style, so often associated with Brazilian football. When he arrived at Milan, the club was already doing very well. Unfortunately for Rivaldo, he never managed to reproduce the form he'd enjoyed at Barcelona. He struggled at his new club, partly because of repeated injury problems and was not a regular starter for the team. Despite his individual struggles, Milan was performing well and Rivaldo was part of the team's UEFA Champions League campaign in his first season at the club. The club was attempting to win its sixth title. Milan progressed through both group stages as table leaders. They then defeated Ajax in the quarter-finals and went on to face rivals into Milan in the semis. Fortunately for Rivaldo, AC managed to squeeze through on the away goals rule. Milan put to face fellow Italian rivals Juventus in the final. Juventus had also performed strongly in the competition. They had dispatched Spanish giants Barcelona and Real Madrid on the way to the final and came into the match with plenty of confidence. The final was to be held at Old Trafford in England on the 28th of May 2003. It was the first time in history that two Italian clubs had faced each other in the Champions League final. Rivaldo had continued his topsy-turvy form in the Champions League. He was still struggling to cement his place in the side and was certainly not guaranteed to be named in the squad for the final. As it turned out, Rivaldo was included in the team, but remained on the sidelines as a substitute. On the day, it was a tight contest. The scores remained at nil all after extra time, but Milan eventually prevailed 3-2 on penalties. Among Rivaldo's club achievements to date are a Brazilian Serie A championship in 1994, two Spanish La Liga titles in 1998 and 99, and a UEFA Champions League title in 2003, along with three Greek League titles in a row in 2005 to 2007. After his first season at AC Milan, his time with the club looked all but over. In 2004, he left and briefly returned to Brazil, playing for Cruzeiro before moving to his ninth club, Olympiacos, in the same year. Rivaldo enjoyed a very successful international career with Brazil, playing for his country from 1993 to 2003. Rivaldo and the national team enjoyed a host of successes during his tenure. The most significant of these successes came in the 2002 World Cup. The Brazilian team were hoping to make up for their loss in the final four years earlier. They finished on top of their group and went on to face Belgium in the second round. They play like in England, so lots of long balls, they are strong on the air. So you have to be careful on the air and then Brazil have to, have to play the same way that they're playing. The Brazilians went into the match favourites after their strong performance in the group stage. They didn't disappoint, winning 2-0. The next mission for Brazil was to beat England. The English team had finished second in their group and then defeated Denmark 3-0 in the second week. The match promised to be tight. They uh, are attacking a lot, with a lot of players, with a lot of skill, of course. So we must be pay attention, of course. 
um, defending very well, but uh, you can't win football games only defending. You have to attack as well. Rivaldo was in good form for Brazil, having scored a goal in every match so far. We have to be very compact, very tight, uh, work as a unit. If we don't do that, we will give them time and space and then they will kill us. It's a great game. Everybody wanted to see this as the final. But instead, it's the quarter-final. I hope Brazil has more luck than England and goes all the way to the final. He continued his good form, scoring a crucial goal as Brazil defeated England 2-0. Brazil advanced to the semi-finals to face Turkey, whom they had beaten 2-1 in the group stage. Rivaldo had scored the winning goal from a penalty. The thing to do is, if we have the opportunity as we did in the first game against Turkey in the group games, is to score goals. We need to score so people don't come after us and tell us that we only won because we were helped by the referee. So we need to score the goals if the opportunity comes. The Brazilians were too strong, prevailing 1-0 in a hard-fought contest. In the final, they would face the mighty Germans. Germany had overcome Paraguay, the United States and Korea in the finals and had only conceded one goal in the tournament so far, thanks to the saving skills of their captain, goalkeeper Oliver Kahn. Brazil's Uninia acknowledged the challenge ahead of them. We have to be a confidence. We, we know that we are prepared, but we know how it's difficult to win uh, Germany. So I think we, we are prepared for anything. We played the same way we played the first six games. We know Germany is ready too, but we are ready to win. I've got a feeling telling me that we'll be the world champions. I can't really explain why. Every one of us has to play the game of his life. They're probably the best team in the world in terms of individual players, with exceptional people in every position. But the team with the most gifted players do not always win. If the best team always won the World Cup, then Brazil would have won it 14 times, not just four. Finals are often decided on small things, sometimes on luck. It may be that the teams will neutralize each other, like what happened in 1994. I have all due respect for Ronaldo, Ronaldinho and Rivaldo, who are fantastic players, but they still have to beat me. The prospect of the best attacking formation in the world, facing the world's best goalkeeper in Oliver Kahn, was an exciting prospect for the fans. Rivaldo was in fantastic form, as were many of his teammates. There was a tremendous amount of faith amongst the team that they could atone for their 1998 final defeat. Both teams had a history of success in World Cups. Both teams was uh, uh, the two teams that uh, get more uh, cup finals, so, but never uh, played again, so I think it will be a great match. After four years of build-up, the 2002 World Cup came down to the outcome of one match on the 30th of June at International Stadium in Yokohama, Japan. The crowd saw a scoreless first half before Ronaldo broke the drought, scoring two goals in the second half to ensure a comfortable win for Brazil. Brazilian fans were understandably ecstatic at the win and celebrations continued into the night. Rivaldo's international honours include the 2002 World Cup triumph, the Copa America in 1999 and the Confederations Cup in 1997. The World Cup was undoubtedly Rivaldo's greatest triumph, the crowning achievement of any footballer's career. During his time on the national team, Rivaldo got to play with many of the best footballers his country has ever produced. Football in the 90s and early 2000s was dominated by Brazil, the most successful nation in World Cup history. 
What made the side so dangerous was its world-famous triple threat, known as the three R's, Ronaldo, Rivaldo and Ronaldinho. The three stars were the best attackers in the world and they struck fear into the hearts of opposing defenders. Ronaldo and Rivaldo fitted together so well in the team, while Ronaldo was a true striker, Rivaldo was more of a playmaker, constantly setting up goals for the deadly Ronaldo. The double act brought many opposition defences unstuck in their time. Ronaldo began his senior career in 1993 at Brazilian club Cruzeiro. He spent one year there before moving to Dutch club PSV Eindhoven, where he soon established himself as a quality striker. He has since played for Barcelona, Inter Milan, Real Madrid, where he played most of his club football, and AC Milan. He currently plays for Corinthians. He played for the Brazilian national team between 1994 and 2006, making 97 appearances and scoring 62 goals. Ronaldo's flair and poise in the box were unrivaled. He soon became a household name and was a poster boy, not just for Brazil, but for the game in general. Such was his fame. He played an integral part in the successful 2002 World Cup campaign, as well as racking up an astonishing number of individual honours. Over 50 at last count. The other musketeer in Brazil's trio of attacking power was Ronaldinho. Ronaldinho played mainly as an attacking midfielder or left winger. Ronaldinho was an excitement machine. He set up play after play for his teammates and the trio fitted together perfectly to devastating effect. Ronaldinho is younger than Ronaldo and Rivaldo. Born in 1980, he began his international career in 1999, a year after his senior club career. He has made 87 appearances and scored 32 goals. Ronaldinho's club career began at Grêmio with the youth squad. He made it to the senior squad in 1998. He stayed at the club for three seasons before being transferred to France to play for Paris Saint-Germain. In 2003, after impressing European scouts, he was transferred to Spanish giant Barcelona, where he played the majority of his football. He currently plays for AC Milan in the Italian Serie A. Although he started later than Ronaldo and Rivaldo, Ronaldinho has come to be acknowledged as one of the greatest players of his generation. And at 30 years old, he still has a few years in him yet. Ronaldinho has earned over 20 individual honours. Among these, two FIFA World Player of the Year awards, rivaling Ronaldo's three. Another of Brazil's household names is the younger, but no less well-known, Kaka. Born in 1982, Kaka is 28 years old. He joined the national team in 2002 as an attacking midfielder. He has made 73 appearances and scored 26 goals for the national team. Kaka's first club was Sao Paulo in Brazil, where he spent six years in the junior squad before becoming a senior in 2001. He played for three seasons with the seniors and then went to Europe, or more specifically to Italy and AC Milan. Kaka has made a name for himself over the course of six seasons in Serie A before being transferred to Real Madrid in 2009. He joined the national team for the 2002 World Cup. However, he only played a total of 25 minutes, all of which were in the first round match against Costa Rica. The talented midfielder has amassed over 35 individual honours in his career to date. An amazing achievement. Like the three R's, he has also received the coveted FIFA World Player of the Year award, winning it in 2007. He also received the Ballon d'Or in 2007 and was named the UEFA Champions League top scorer in 06-07. He has also won three UEFA Team of the Year awards. Still in his 20s, the trophies are sure to keep coming. Rivaldo's brilliance on the field was occasionally contrasted with alleged discretions off the field, such as his falling out with Barcelona manager Louis van Gaal. However, Rivaldo let his on-field talent do the talking for most of the time. He's married to partner Rose, with whom he has two sons, named Rivaldinho and Thamiris. Rivaldo prefers to leave the spotlight to son Rivaldinho, who has appeared in a number of TV commercials in Spain and is already something of a star. Rivaldo has kept his life off the field very private, 
and gives very little away about his life. However, he makes no secret of his deep passion for helping the poor children of the world. His commitment to the cause stems from his upbringing. Rivaldo endured a horrific childhood, and just like him, for many children in Brazil, soccer is their only way out of a life of poverty. Few make it, but some, like Rivaldo, have both the mental strength and the natural talent to make it in the world of professional football. Rivaldo made a name for himself by shaking off opponents and advancing upfield. He accomplished similar feats in his childhood, shrugging off numerous obstacles that stood in his way of becoming a football star. Growing up in the north of Brazil, a long way from the birthplace of most of Brazil's star exports, Rivaldo faced almost insurmountable odds, and yet he managed to overcome them. It's not so surprising then that the Rivaldo supports charities aimed at ending poverty, both in his home country and around the world. He helped found the charity that bears his name. He donates part of his wages to the charity, which aims to help children in Brazil and Spain. He has used his position of power and wealth to lend a helping hand to many people in need. Despite approaching the twilight of his career, Rivaldo's wealth continues to grow. He moved to Uzbekistan club Bunyodko in 2008 after the club offered him a lucrative deal worth about 10.2 million euros over two years. Later that year, he signed a new contract that will keep him in Uzbekistan until June 2011. For many stars of the football world, fame means lucrative sponsorship contracts, tabloid headlines, affairs with models, endless merchandise. But Rivaldo has for the most part avoided these trappings, instead letting his football be the main focus in his life. His many individual honours are a shining testament to his focus and determination. His accolades include the FIFA World Player of the Year award in 1999 and the UEFA Champions League top scorer in 2000. He has also been named in the FIFA 100. These individual awards reflect Rivaldo's talent and dedication as a player. They will stand as timeless reminders of his world-beating exploits on the pitch. Meanwhile, he continues to play on in Uzbekistan, where he brings a touch of class to the local competition. Thanks to Rivaldo's fairy tale story, young kids everywhere now know that dreams can come true, however their lives start out.